They were close colleagues, Kathy Gannon and Anya Niedrenhaus. Kathy was a special correspondent in Pakistan and Afghanistan, but originally from Timmins, Ontario. Anya, a German photographer, both working for Associated Press. Ah, oh, we were a great team, yeah. We liked to do things alone, you know. She always traveled by herself. I generally traveled by myself. Um, so it was very unusual for the two of us to find each other. The two met covering Afghanistan in 2009. They ended up roaming the remote corners of that war-torn and dangerous country. We were the perfect match, and it was as if we had known each other forever, you know. She had a great eye. She had a beautiful eye, beautiful, beautiful eye, and she could always capture sort of the, the inner essence of, of, uh, of the Afghans. Neither veteran journalist took risks carelessly. On the eve of Afghanistan's elections last spring, they traveled out to a rural polling station in the east, near Host. Kathy, on April 4th, uh, all of us who work in difficult, conflict-ridden areas make a risk assessment. Mm -hmm. So when you went out that day before the election, what was your risk assessment? Um, we had really um, been very careful on how we, we uh, went about this. We had arranged to go with the uh, police and the military. When it happened, we were in a compound, a, a police compound, that was surrounded by high walls, you know, I mean, and, and we had been talking. A police compound. A police compound, and there were army people there, there were police there. Uh, we had been talking to everybody, and Anya had been taking pictures, and we had, it just started to drizzle. And so we got into the car, and. I don't remember the beginning of the shooting, but I do remember uh, um, at, toward the end, the last bullets hitting me because your body jerks when, when, when you're hit. And as I was hit a couple of times, my body was jerking. And I thought it was an explosion near the car. And, and, I, uh, and then I could smell the gunpowder really well. And, uh, and then when it stopped, I, I looked down and my, my hand was separated from my wrist. And there was a lot of blood and everything. And I could see Anya and we were sort of pressed against each other, you know. And I could see her, but her hair looked fine. And uh, I mean, I wasn't able to say much. I just looked over at our translator and uh, our um, photographer and I just said, you know, please help us. And so they jumped into the car and uh, they were driving uh, really fast because it was a 45 minute drive. And during that time, I, I, I didn't know how I knew it. So I was just trying to breathe and go slowly, you know, and go peacefully, you know, and saying your goodbyes and everything, because I was sure that I was, I was dying because I was losing so much blood, and I, I was just sure that I wouldn't get to the hospital in time. You say you don't remember the beginning of the shooting. I don't remember seeing anybody raise the gun to us. I was on the right side, Anya was on the left. And so I've seen the, the shooter car. was so on the left. Was, she was yeah. on the, in the left and hand. And she died instantly. Yeah, it was instant. That she died instantly, they said, after uh, when I was able to, to ask people and to talk about it more. And it was at point blank range. Yeah, he was right up. He, he came up to the car and, and uh, opened fire and, and then put his Kalashnikov down. And Why did he shoot you? Well, he came up with several stories. He, at, first, at first he said, listen, you know, there was a bombing in my village and some of my family members died and I just had to, to take uh, revenge. And then he said, no, no, it wasn't my village, but it was a nearby village, and, but it was my tribe's people. So I had to take revenge. So he's been charged, he's been found guilty, and he's been sentenced to death. Um, Does that close it for you? Good question. Um, I think so. I mean, I want him punished. I don't believe in the death penalty. Anya's family doesn't believe in the death penalty either. It's one crazy gunman, Susan. You know, you can't, you can't hold a, a nation responsible, and you certainly can't um, dwell on it. Um, but these are people that many of our countries helped train as well. And an Afghan policeman who was protecting you turned on you. It's a very volatile country today. Um, there's a lot of people who are angry. I mean, they're angry because they thought Afghanistan would look different after, you know, almost a decade and a half. Uh, so much money, uh, the involvement of, of uh, so many countries. So, Kathy, you are a true journalist. You're <laughs> analyzing your own yeah. situation. Yeah, are you angry? Sure. 
I was angry, you know, I was really angry at one point. Um, I think Anya too would have gone beyond that, but I, I don't want to be held hostage to this shooting, you know. I don't want this to define um, uh, uh, my future. Do you have any survivor's guilt? Uh, yeah, you know, a few times it's been, you know, I've, I've said it, my sister's heard me say it more than once, you know, that, you know, maybe, you know, wish I would, would have been me or, you know, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I just feel more just sad that she's not here. I just miss her all the time. We'll put the vitamin E oil on there after. Yeah. Kathy's sister, a nurse in Guelph, has been helping her recover from 14 surgeries, mostly done in the U.S. There are still three more to go. And so they've had to rebuild my arm. Um, there was like a, a six or eight inch hole right through. Did you, know, you put your arm up? I what? must have, you know, I must have automatically. And then because it's at close range and it's a high velocity rifle. So they've taken a bone from my leg and uh, tissue and, and muscle and, and uh, uh, fat and, and arteries. And they've had to uh, uh, remove tendons and put new ones in and stuff. So they've, they've rebuilt that. Yeah. Have you looked into voice activated technology to write? I have, you <laughs> know, but I, you know, I really need to have that it's tactile, hands on. Isn't it? It's yeah. so tactile, you know, and I'm just, you know, so I've, I've done some writing using just these fingers, but I'm getting really fast. <laughs> so, so we have our fingers crossed and now I can cross my fingers, <laughs> which I couldn't before. So, so I'm hopeful. <laughs> if you could just tell me what are your priorities for Afghanistan? For more than 20 years, Gannon has been covering Afghan stories, watching the rise and fall of the former president, Hamid Karzai, and the brutal war with the Taliban. Like Anya Niedrenhaus, she has been transfixed with the turmoil and tensions, growing stronger again now. From a security perspective, it's a very, very difficult time ahead for Afghanistan. Again. Again. The Canadian government is now warning Canadians again to get out of Afghanistan sure. if they are there. Sure. Well, I mean, I, I certainly think it'll become increasingly violent. And I don't see what the plan is or the strategy is. A lot of the young Taliban don't want to negotiate. They think, why should we? We're really doing well, you know. Most people, having gone through what you did, would never step foot in the dangerous situation again. Yeah, no, I'm definitely going back. And I know Anya would be exactly the same. I mean, I am not going to let some crazy gunman decide my future. You know, I'm going to go back to Afghanistan for sure, and I'm going to work. And I think there are, there are wonderful stories to be told still, and I, and I want to tell them. You know, I still, I still really want to tell those stories. It's what we do, you know, and, and, and it's what I love to do. Well, you are a courageous woman. You're being honored for your courage, not just for getting shot. <laughs> we wish you well, and thanks uh, so much, Kathy. Thank you so much. It was a real pleasure. Thank you very much.